Well here we have our overall classification that we've been using. First degree, superficial burns affecting the epidermis. Partial thickness burns, second degree burns going into the dermis. Full thickness and uh, deep. So we want to look at the, uh, the partial thickness in this, in this clip. So as usual here we have the uh, diagram of the skin to orientate ourselves. We have the dermis here and the epidermis on top. And we're talking about these burns which are superficial dermal. Now actually this term is slightly confusing. Superficial, we tend to think of as superficial burns affecting the epidermis. So really the better term here is shallow dermal. They're affecting the top part of the dermis. Now the area that's burnt here is going to be, we're going to lose all of the epidermis and their partial thickness, so they're affecting part of the thickness of the dermis. So the burn might occupy an area such as this. This area here can be burned, losing all of the epidermis and losing some of the dermis, losing the superficial area of the dermis. It's a shallow dermal burn. So how might we recognise burns of this nature? Talking about superficial or uh, shallow dermal burns affecting the superficial parts of the dermis. Well, we know that in the dermis, there's lots of small blood vessels, arterioles, capillaries, millions of capillaries, venules. The dermis is well perfused with blood vessels. So when there's a burn, there's going to be inflammation. And the inflammation is going to cause quite profound capillary vasodilation. So if we think about the normal capillaries, the walls of the capillaries are something like this. They have, a, that's the nucleus there, the, the vascular endothelial type cells. That would be a normal, uh, normal capillary. The lumen in the middle, the red blood cells going down the lumen of course. What happens in the inflammatory action is um, these vasodilate, they move apart. So if you imagine that my hands are the imagine that my hands are the cells in the wall of the capillary, when they move apart, can you see there's now gaps left in between the cells? And exactly the same thing happens with the inflammatory process. And as we know, burns cause a lot of inflammation. So these cells move apart in the vasodilation, like this. So the cells have dilated and moved apart, and this greatly increases the permeability. So what this means is that, uh, whereas here there was only small gaps for the water to get out from the plasma, or the plasma component of the blood rather than just water, now there's great big gaps, so huge amounts can get out. We've increased uh, vascular permeability as a result of this inflammatory process. And we get a lot of tissue fluid going out into the tissue spaces here. But of course, this is all lost here, so this is now the surface. So all these tissue fluids the inflammatory exudates, the inflammatory fluids are now in the, in the base of the burn. So what, what we find is that um, these superficial burns are uh, moist and uh, weeping, or a better term is exuding. So the shallow dermal burns are uh, moist and exuding for that reason. Now in some areas the um, epidermis is not burnt away, it's still there. It's still there, but it's dead because it's been burnt, it's, it's, it's dead. But can you see that means we've got a situation now where we've got lots of tissue fluid, but the epidermis is, is still there. So the tissue fluid's got to go somewhere. So what happens is the tissue fluid just clecks underneath the dead epidermis. And that is what we call a, 
blister. So uh, fluid loss blistering. And also here we notice that there's a, this should be a separate point really, we have exposed nociceptors. So we've got the fluid loss in the blistering and we've got uh, exposed nociceptors. So the fluid loss, sorry the blistering rather because the fluid is collecting underneath dead tissues. Now the exposed nociceptors. Now um, we have noted that there are lots of nociceptors in the dermis. The dermis is where we get most of the nociceptors. There's no nociceptors in the epidermis above but there's lots of nociceptors here. And can you see now that these nociceptors, these pain sensitive fibres are now exposed to the necrosed burned area. So that's going to stimulate the nociceptors a lot. There's going to be lots of depolarizing in the nociceptors. And of course that's what goes to the brain and is uh, in, well into the wherever it is into the central nervous system and it's experienced as pain. So these burns are very painful. And how do we know how deep the burn is? Well, one of the main ways is the amount of uh, blanching. The amount that they'll blanch. So remember the blanching goes white, capillary, refill to fill it up again. Now, do you think you'll still get blanching in shallow dermal injuries? Well, the answer is that you will because we can see here that the vasculature, the arterioles, the capillaries and the venules in the lower part of the dermis are preserved. So when we press on there, it'll still go white. When we let go, there'll still be blood going through the preserved vascular elements in the lower parts of the dermis. So we'll still get blanching. So we press and we still get blanching an important clinical observation. So we've got fluid loss, moist wounds, we've got blistering, we've got great pain from the exposed nociceptors, and uh, we've got preserved blanching. Now, what are the uh, implications for healing? Well, healing is it's normally, it's normally 7 to 21 days, as long as we can keep the wound moist and keep the infection out. Um, healing is in 7 to 21 days. And there's preserved deep structures. I'll show you what that means in a minute. Preserved deep structures. Because we preserve some uh, epidermal keratinocytes. So epidermal keratinocytes are preserved in the lower areas, well, in, yeah, in the lower areas of the dermis, and that means we can regenerate. We can get tissue regeneration. So quite what does, uh, does this mean? Well, what we have, if we take the skin, uh, there's deep structures going into the skin. So here, for example, we have a, sweat gland going into the dermis and on this diagram the epidermis is going to be here so we see that the sweat gland goes through the epidermis down into the dermis below because this is the dermis below here so we see that the sweat gland is in the dermis and also there's hairs so here's a hair follicle, and these can be very deep structures. These can go uh, way down, actually, even sometimes to the hypodermis, the, the hair follicles. And here's a hair follicle. And the wavy line between the epidermis and the dermis, and the hair root is going to be down here. Let's have a green hair this time. Here's the, here's the hair root down here, forming the shaft of the hair, going up 
the hair follicle, giving us hair, which is good. But the key thing from the healing of burns perspective is, and the healing of skin injuries, which is fascinating, is that these cells on the top, these are keratinocytes that form the epidermis. So the epidermis is made of, 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 keratin, of keratin sites. I hope we notice the term there, keratinocytes, cells that produce keratin. So the epidermis is mostly keratinocytes. Um, but these keratinocytes actually go down and line the sweat glands. And the keratinocytes also line the hair follicles. All the way down. In fact, the, 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 there's keratinocytes right down at the bottom here because they divide and actually give rise to the hair because hair is mostly keratin. That's going all the way down, same on that side. It's, they're all lined with uh, keratinocytes. Now, if we think of wound healing as being in two parts, there can be a fibrosis or there can be this other term, regeneration. We can get regeneration of the tissues. Regeneration. Now fibrosis leads to scar tissue. Whereas regeneration is a kind of um, new for old type policy. And cells can only reproduce themselves by this process of mitosis. simple cell division. Now, if we imagine the situation where we've got a shallow um, dermal injury and all this up here is lost. Now, here we've lost the thickness of the epidermis. And if you think about a situation where you've got uh, no rabbits in a, in a field, then you go back next year, there's still going to be no rabbits because they can't reproduce. But if you've got two rabbits, you'll go back and the field will be full because they'll reproduce. So we've lost all of this epidermis. So there's no epidermis to mitotically divide, to heal by regeneration, which is what we want because we want to replace the keratinocytes. So isn't it fortunate that we've got spare keratinocytes down here and spare ker keratinocytes uh, all the way down here? And when there's injury, cytokines released by the injury will stimulate mitosis in these keratinocytes. There will be increased rates of mitosis and these will migrate upwards and they will form a new epidermis. So that means we have an epidermis produced by regeneration rather than scar tissue produced by fibrosis. And this means that if these shallow dermal injuries are well managed, we can get regeneration of the epidermis. That means we get good cosmetic results because we get new skin, which is great. And um, it also means we get good functional results because we don't get the, uh, the scar tissue in the contractures. So because of that underlying design, anatomy, physiology, that means we can get um, good regenerative healing in the superficial or the uh, shallow dermal injuries. So recognize them, the moist and weeping, fluid loss, blister formation, exposed nociceptors causing pain, retain blanching, um, healing from preserved elements, preserved epidermal elements that penetrate down into the dermis. And it's a good thing that the epidermal keratinocytes can regenerate, meaning we can heal without uh, scar tissue formation, providing you manage the wound well, of course.